Well, it was a historic year for Massachusetts women's basketball, a year that included the program's first ever A-10 championship and a trip to the NCAA tournament. For head coach Tori Verdi and his staff and players, well, they feel the success for this program is just beginning. And with that, welcome into Legacy Hall, everybody, for our Massachusetts signing period show. I'm Jay Burnham alongside Nathan Strauss. And throughout the next 30 minutes, we're going to visit with head coach Tori Verdi. We're going to talk with some of his staff and also dive in to the three incoming players that will join the A-10 champs this upcoming fall. But first, Nathan, let's start here at the top. You got to start with the A-10 championship. You were a big part of this run broadcasting last year for women's basketball. What stands out to you when you think about that championship run and, and the memories that were made? I mean, really, first of all, Jay, thank you for having me. The biggest thing I think was the continuity and the belief that this team had from the beginning. You saw it when they got off to their hottest start in the Title IX era, their most consecutive wins to start a season since 1972. They had a few setbacks in the middle of the season. They went through a long COVID pause, but they rebounded from that. They made it to the A-10 postseason tournament with home court advantage in the first round, and then they ended up you know, building on that belief and taking down the number one overall seed and multiple time defending champion Dayton uh, in the championship game to earn their first A-10 title in program history. It was an amazing journey from start to finish. Yeah, anytime you can be Dayton, it's a good feeling. And for this team, this is going to be a signing day show. We'll talk about the incoming players, but you can't talk about this program without talking about the returning players. As we take a look here, the core of players returning to this team are all big, big time members and minute players for Coach Tori Verdi last year. Yeah, you return over 90% of minutes from last year. You return the top seven players in the rotation. It's huge, that continuity. And, and along with that continuity comes experience. You've got a sixth year player in Sam Breen, the reigning A-10 player of the year, a first in program history. You return another thousand point score in Destiny Philoxy, who has a chance to become the all time program record uh, leader in assists. Those two players, co-captains last year, they'll provide a big boost, but don't discount the, the returners as well. Bernaya Mayo, Angelique Galakalandi, so many big names on this team that will make a huge impact this coming season. And you see some of those players as well that not only have established themselves, but they've grown over time under the tutelage of this coaching staff. And, and that has to be considered, you feel, for incoming recruits to say, look at the progress that some of these standout A-10 basketball players have made from their freshman year to their senior years. Yeah, and a perfect example of that is Sydney Taylor, who didn't really play all that much her freshman year. Sophomore year really showed off her sweet shooting stroke. And then this last year wound up as a second team all, 10, all A-10 player. Uh, you know, that's the kind of growth that Tori Verdi and his entire coaching staff really want to encourage the ability to learn your freshman year and then build on that to have great success later on. It feels like the A-10 certainly got to know those key players at Massachusetts, but there were players on the roster last year that didn't see time because of injury and other issues. So you could actually get a bolster of additional players that could fight for this playing time because they didn't see the court last year. Absolutely, and whether it's someone like Stephanie Kuleja, who had an injury midway through the year, or someone like Natasha Harden or Aisha Dabo, plenty of players who know the systems, who have been around the team, who are ready to step into their roles and get whatever minutes are or, or earn their minutes rather on the hardware next year. Okay, last one for you here before we talk with head coach Tori Verdi. You've got the core returning, you've got at this point, three players could be more coming in. You know, how do you mesh those in terms of uh, trying to, to build out this roster? Well, I think the coaching staff has really emphasized bringing in players who buy into the culture. And I think that makes it a lot easier as an entry point because these players know that nothing is handed to them, right? They'll have to earn their way into the rotation. And that makes it a lot easier. But the fact that you're bringing in three players with varying levels of experience means that they'll be able to mesh seamlessly with the returners as is. So super excited to see what Lily Ferguson, Layla Fair, and Kristen Williams can bring to this team in the coming season. That is the incoming class as of now for Massachusetts women's basketball. We'll talk about them and the success that this program has had with head coach Tori Verdi in just a moment. But first, in case you missed it, Four Massachusetts coaches were traveling across the Commonwealth as part of our coaches caravan. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of introductions, and a great time. And here are some of the highlights from that trip from East to West.
What's the most frequent question you get from fans or have gotten from fans for you? And then we'll go to, to Coach Brown as well. What happened to your hair? <laughs> By the way, what are you guys doing with the old turf? I know where a piece of it can go. I you got to have great culture. Um, and when you look at it, the one thing that I think that we have in our programs and will continue to have is a culture where our players aren't leaving. You know, yes, we may be grabbing some players from different programs, but our best players are staying home. And that says a lot about our program. It says a lot about the athletic department and what we're doing at the University of Massachusetts. That size is what separates. And I think I'm no longer the biggest guy in the gym. And, and I think that's going to be a strength of our team. Right. Finding games to play right now is really, really hard for us because we have power five schools that will not come to the Mullen Center to play us. Doc Rivers has one of the greatest lines I've ever heard. He says, recruit R's, not S's. And I said, what are you talking about? R's, not S's. He said, recruit character, not characters. When you look at and you see where they placed all of us, I just want to make this known. You know, obviously they placed Frank right next to me because they, they want to rub some of this good luck and, and some of this winning off on him. All right. And then obviously the same thing with Coach Brown. All right. <laughs> Rubbing off on Coach oh. Carvel. So, you know, they got some. They got And what a lot of fun it was on the coach's caravan. And we've got the man who provided that fun for us, Coach Tori Verdi. And Coach, uh, before we get to the team and, and what's coming in here for the next season, had to be a lot of exciting, exciting times here traveling with the coaches throughout the state. Truly uh, enjoyed myself and uh, had the opportunity, obviously, to spend some time with my colleagues, uh, reminisce, talk, uh, and tell stories, um, but also talk about uh, UMass and what we're doing. Um, so it was great to get out into the uh, community and uh, visit with our uh, you know, family and friends and donors and um, get everyone's perspective on things and uh, what we're doing. What I can tell you um, is that there's a lot of excitement for the University of Massachusetts and its athletic department. Um, and, uh, and it's great and it's spread throughout the sports. You know, they're really excited about football and obviously hockey and and, uh, and men's basketball. And I, th I think that uh, Coach Martin has done a great job of getting out there, being visible, um, and telling his story. And I just think it's a matter of time, you know, before we see his program truly take off. Well, we know you're never going to get tired of carrying that uh, trophy around from the A-10 championship. And this is a show we're going to talk about the incoming players, but you have so many coming back. So why don't you speak to the core of players that you have, you have returning for this upcoming season? Yeah, I mean, one, um, I don't think I'm doing the, you know, carrying of the trophy uh, since it's 50 pounds. I think uh, I have other people who are doing that for me, which I truly appreciate, but it's nice to carry that around. Um, but uh, very excited about, uh, you know, this coming season and uh, rightfully so with, um, you know, the bulk of our team coming back. And uh, when you look at it, our top seven are returning. Um, so I'm very excited about our core. And when you look at it, I think the one thing that, you know, screams is just, you know, the versatility, um, but also the experience. Um, and I think that um, there's a lot to be said about the experience. You got the most valuable player in the A-10 with Sam Breen, and I think that, you know, I think she could continue to grow her game. And, uh, and we expect that from her, and I know that she's working on her, you know, perimeter shot, and she shot the three really well towards the end of the season, uh, which helped us. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and we continue to grow there, um, you know, grow her game as well. Um, but then when you look at, you know, the guards that are around her, I think Sydney Taylor could be, you know, one of the best scoring guards in the A-10 as well. So those two, that dynamic duo, along with, you know, um, Destiny Philoxy, you're talking about three um, all-conference players. And, and I think that the three of them together, uh, you know, could do something amazing, amazing each and every single night. Uh, but don't let me leave out, you know, Angelique and what she's done for us, um, you know, especially on, on the interior. Uh, I think that, um, you know, her best basketball is yet to come. A couple of years ago when you made it to the A-10 championship game, you had those seven players, the Savage Seven. How important is it to you, you know, you've emphasized continuity a lot and culture a lot, to have that core now entering basically a third season, having played together that entire time? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, you know, when 
when I took over this program, you know, and I talked at length with our athletic director, Mark Bamford, and we talked about, you know, we don't want to be a one-hit wonder. We want to be able to sustain success. And um, that's where we are. You know, we, we, we've competed for championships. We've won championships. And now we want to continue to sustain that success. And I think that when you look at the transfer portal, the fact that there was 1,400 women's basketball players in the portal itself, and none of our top players entered the portal, I think it tells you, you know, the story of what we're doing here. Um, our culture is very, very important to us. We're very, very family oriented. We are connected. Um, our players are loved. Um, and I know that, you know, they feel that. Um, and they want to continue to do something special. And that's why they're coming back for another year. Uh, but we're super excited about, uh, you know, them and, and what's returning. And then also um, the players that we have coming in. Pause right there. We'll talk about those players when we return on the UMass Basketball Signing Period Show from Legacy Hall here in Amherst. UMass women's basketball are Atlantic 10 champions and they're getting ready to defend their first ever title this fall. Come be a part of the historic Minute Woman era with head coach Tori Verdi as a season ticket holder. Season ticket deposits are being accepted now for the 2022 and 2023 season. Reserve yours today with a deposit of only $25. Visit umassathletics.com slash tickets to get yours today. Go UMass! Back here from Legacy Hall as we talk about UMass women's basketball with head coach Tori Verdi and Nathan Strauss. And coach, you got three players at this point of uh, shooting this that are coming in. And before we get to them specifically, how difficult can it be for you to try and kind of mesh some new players with what we talked about in the first segment there of all the core that you have returning here in Amherst? Yeah, I think it's going to be difficult. Um, you know, that's one of the tasks but uh, at hand, but we'll figure it out. You know, I mean, uh, I think every team has problems, and if our problems are because we have a lot of talented players here, I'll take that over any other problem any other day. Um, but we'll be able to um, mesh them in, and I'm super excited about um, the newbies coming in, and I think that, one, it gives us a ton of depth at all positions. Um, you know, so regardless of, you know, uh, if one of our, you know, top seven um, is struggling on any given night or they're in foul trouble, I know that we have enough um, on the bench that uh, we can replace them and continue to be successful. Let's start off by talking about Layla Fair coming in from St. Joe's. Obviously, we saw her score 16 points in that A-10 semifinal game. What are you excited about her and what do you think she can bring to the front court? Oh, I think she, she could bring a lot and I think that her best basketball is ahead of her, to be honest with you. And Layla was... You know, I know that she's a transfer. We first recruited her here. She actually committed to UMass and then, you know, decided to, uh, uh, you know, uh, utilize an audible on us and, and, and commit to uh, St. Joe's. So it's great to get her back here. Um, but as far as her strengths go, just her size alone, her physicality, uh, she could score with her back to the basket. She could rebound, rebound on our area as well. Um, you know, we're going to allow her to really grow her game and face the basket a little bit more. and. Um, be ready to knock down perimeter shots. So, and, and, you know, the fact that she could run the floor as well. And so she's as quick as any other guard. Um, so we're super excited about, you know, that dynamic that she has. But then on the defensive side, you know, she can defend any post player in our league because of her size and her strength alone. Yeah, six foot two, all A-10 rookie team last yep. year. Layla Fair incoming here for Massachusetts. And she'll be joined by another transfer, Kristen Williams, coming from Pensacola State College. This is a shooter, yep. uh, a 1,500-plus point scorer, a McDonald's All-American nominee. So what do those accolades mean for her and what might we expect from yeah, her? Yeah, I mean, uh, when you look at it, just, uh, I mean, a ton of uh, versatility as far as scoring. She could score at all three areas. She could knock down the three. She's got a great mid-range game, and she could get to the rim as well. And so, um, again, it's just going to – I mean, it's going to be scary to see her out on the floor with Sydney Taylor, to be honest with you. You know, and if you got Bernaya Mayo at the point or Destiny Floxy, those guys really, you know, getting downhill, you know, collapsing the defense, and then we're driving and kicking. And if they, those guys have any side of the rim, I mean, it's going to be knocked down, and we're going to start calling them the Splash, you know, sisters. And, and uh, so we're going to be really super excited about that because – you know, then what do you what do you do defensively? You know, 
um, play us zone because we're too big. I mean, go right ahead and they'll have open shots all night long. Um, but then, you know, when you look at teams that play us man, um, it's going to allow Sam Breen and, and Layla Fair and any of our other post players to go one-on-one -on -one in the post. So um, we are extremely balanced here uh, in, in the coming year. Let's talk to you about Lily Ferguson. You know, we mentioned two players coming from out of New England, Lily coming from Connecticut. Yeah. What do you see her bringing to this team over her time here? And also, how important is it to maintain those local connections when you're on the recruiting trail? No, absolutely. Uh, we want to uh, maintain them and we want to, um, you know, we want to be able to recruit and sign, you know, kids in our backyard and, and she's one of them. She brings, you know, athleticism, some strength, some size at the guard position. Um, so she'll be a wing player for us. But uh, again, um, you know, being six foot, she brings that size and she could go end line to end line. Um, you know, in transition and, and, and rip and, and drive from, you know, anywhere on the three-point line. And so somebody with that size, uh, it, you know, and, and, and just uh, her strength alone, we could post her up, you know, and take advantage of that as well. So we could put her and move her around, you know, the floor and, uh, and take advantage of her strengths, no question about that. But it's really important for us to recruit in our own backyard and get the, uh, and get the best players um, in New England. Lily Ferguson, CHSCA All-State two times, four-time All-Conference, conference champion, state finalist. She joins the pair of transfers coming in here for your program. The world has changed, right, since you started coaching. How important is it for you to, to add some true freshmen into the mix with players that have already a year or two of experience under their belt? Well, I think it's really important. And I think that first you got to figure out, you know, your vision for your program. What do you want? I mean, do you want, you know, to your kids, do you want a revolving door or, you know, do you want some, you know, structure and you want foundation? And I look at it like the majority of our roster needs to be for your kids. They need to be anchored here. You know, and then I think that you sprinkle in, you know, transfers and you, you utilize the portal for what it is. Um, but the majority of, of your team needs to be, you know, for your kids. And uh, that's something that we want here. And I want players who are invested. I want players here with two feet, you know, in and uh, want to represent the University of Massachusetts, you know, the right way. And when they take the court, I want them to be so proud of what they're doing um, that when fans leave the game, I want them to be like, wow, that team, I mean, plays extremely hard and they represent us the right way. And I want them to leave now feel good about what we're doing um, and how we're doing it. Coach, thanks so much. Congratulations on this incoming class. And I know there's more to come too. So we'll check in with you later on. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. All right. That is head coach Tori Verdi. When we return, now UMass alum Nathan Strauss will sit down with associate head coach Mike Leffler. That's coming up on the UMass Basketball Signing Period Show. Welcome back here, Nathan Strauss with Associate Head Coach Mike Leffler. And Associate Head Coach is a new title for you. You obviously got that promotion midway through last season. Just what did it mean to you um, to get that, that elevation status? Well, I appreciate it that Coach Verdi um, looked at me as someone that was 
I guess, worthy of that title. You know, I've been able to make an impact behind the scenes and on the court with the program. Um, so I, I really appreciated it. New title here at UMass, I've certainly kind of had that title at other universities as well. Um, you know, one thing that goes with the title, I, I just try and be cognizant that we really share responsibilities on the staff. And um, there is really no hierarchy, um, even though the title may say that. But I think Lynn, Cassandra, and I do a great job sharing responsibility, taking ownership of every aspect of the program. And it's something I really appreciate um, working with those two every day. Now, I heard a story from Coach Verdi last year about the day of the A-10 championship game against Dayton that you guys had an early meeting with the entire staff and one of your roles as defensive coordinator for this team. And can you talk a little bit about your collaborative efforts as a staff and sort of how your relationships work together? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, in terms of our collaboration and how we work together as a staff, as I said, I do think everyone, there is shared responsibility and we're a veteran enough staff that everyone has a lot of experience in all areas. So yes, I might be the defensive coordinator, but Lynn, Cassandra, obviously Coach Verdi, we all share thoughts, ideas on how to, how to defend, how to, um, what we're gonna try and exploit offensively. So day of the A-10 tournament, yeah, I think as a staff, we just had a meeting to just shore up our game plan. Um, you know, it's something that we've done in the past and I just, as long as we stay on the same page, I think it's a lot easier to keep our team and our players on the same page. Obviously, after that A-10 championship game, you guys got to experience March Madness out in Oklahoma against Notre Dame. Just what was that experience like for you as, as someone who's seen the growth of this program in the last couple of years? Well, I think the game was a, a culmination. You know, I know the A-10 uh, championship game was two weeks before the NCAA tournament, so we did have some time to prepare and really time to enjoy the A-10 championship. And I think that was really unique and awesome for our players. You know, um, the build-up, the selection show here, you know, it was really special. It was, um, you know, memories that will last a lifetime for our players. And I think we got a taste of the NCAA tournament, which I think, um, was great. Um, similar two years ago, we played in the A-10 championship game, lost to VCU. I think that really helped us in our game this year against Dayton. It helped us um, kind of stay grounded, stay committed to the game plan during the game as we were making runs, as Dayton was making runs. You know, and hopefully in the future, if we're fortunate enough to get back to the NCAA tournament, our team can reflect back on our experiences this year and, and hopefully it will lead to success. Well, it was such an amazing run last year. Obviously, there are going to be a couple of banners going up in the Mullen Center or here in the Champion Center to celebrate that team. Last question for you is, you've, you're someone whose career has spanned a number of states, a number of conferences all around the East Coast and the Atlantic and beyond. What does it mean to you to sort of be settled here in, Mass in Massachusetts, and what does the Commonwealth mean to you? Well, I mean, UMass is a special place, and the day I came out to interview for the job here, um, I felt just great support from the administration, from the campus, from the community, and you know everything I thought that the job and my experience would be, um, it has become. So it's a, truly a great place. Um, I've been really fortunate to work with, you know, great people, um, experienced staff, and and a great team as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Associate Head Coach Mike Leffler. Big things are in store. When we come back, Jay Burnham sits down with Coach Cassandra Calloway. Back here one final time at Legacy Hall as we talk Massachusetts basketball with assistant coach and recruiting coordinator Coach Calloway. And Coach, your role, the world, has changed in terms of recruiting and transfers. Give us a little bit of an overview at this uh, incoming class currently and, and what excites you about them. Well, you know, to answer that question for sure, it's, it's so much different than it was maybe just a few years ago um, in terms of COVID and, you know, how that shaped everyone's life. Um, in terms of our incoming class, I'm just so excited about them. I know everyone knows who it is coming in. Uh, we have Layla Fair, we have Kristen Williams, and we have Lily Ferguson. And, you know, they just all bring something different and dynamic to our team. And we're just super excited, to, you know, to have them joining us. Obviously, Layla Fair and Kristen are transfers, and we definitely utilize the transfer portal. With Lily, she's a, a true freshman, so you know we wanted to make sure that we still have those type of players coming in to help. It feels like there's sort of a, a targeted space there where you've got transfers, but they're transfers that have 
years to play. Is that by design as you look at the roster construction? Yes, I would say so because at the end of the day, we still wanted to create our culture. You know, we don't want to have those transfer where you're just coming in for one year and you know, you don't know what you're going to expect from them. Um, we want to have those transfers with those years available so that we can kind of, you know, get them to buy into our culture and they're still going to be culture players, you know. That's what we really want. Tell us about that culture. I mean, you've been with Coach Verdi predating the time here at Massachusetts, joined us during the pandemic in 2020, just kind of slid in there uh, when everyone was remote. But yeah. what is that culture? What's so special about him and the relationship that, that you have that brought you here to Massachusetts? Yeah, it's just the family. I mean, it's just super family oriented. Everyone on this team likes each other, and that's not easy to do. <laughs> I've been at some programs where it's just not that, but you know, you got to be able to like the person next to you and just be cordial with them. So I would say, you know, the family oriented part is, is huge. Um, the transparency, like you know what you're going to get with Coach Birdie. That's one thing. What are you selling at Massachusetts? I mean, I know you had to, when you joined, you had to recruit remotely. That couldn't have been easy. Now I hope your job is a lot easier when people can come here and, and see these facilities that are on campus. Well, you know, you're selling Coach Ferdy because you know that the type of passion that he brings as a coach. He had his goal and he achieved that and we're still going to do more. I just think that a coach like that, you know, you win with, you know, and he's not, he's not hard to sell at this point because he said well, we're going to win championships and we're we're doing that and we're going to continue to do that so that's our sale and you've got uh, a core of returning players is there a way where you look at a, an incoming freshman like lily ferguson and say hey you know the, the minutes might not be there right away they could be but you're also going to learn from some of the best including you know player of the year in the a10 in and San absolutely Green. absolutely and also to that point jay you know sydney didn't play her freshman year Destiny didn't play her freshman year, and these are our all-conference players. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if you want to be a part of something great, it's, it's going to take some of that type of adversity, and I just think that the players that we bring in are those type of players. Now, we just heard from Coach Leffler. I think a lot of folks around here know uh, Lynn Ann Kokoski and Coach Kokoski and what she's done. You know, Ferdy, you mentioned his family atmosphere. What's the dynamic with this coaching staff and a little bit of continuity now with, with all you guys together? I think we all bring something different to the table, but at the end of the day, our common goal is just, you know, to all come together and reach that goal. You know, the, despite whatever it is that I do as a recruiting coordinator, Mike as the associate head coach, and then Lynn, you know, we all want the same goal out of all of it. And we all see ourselves as equal. Recruiting class not done yet. Can you tease anything <laughs> for us? <laughs> What's on the uh, horizon? We're still working on it. Yeah. We're still working on it. That's all I got for you. Phone calls, tours throughout the I mean, I can area. tell you this. Everyone that we want to come here has already visited. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. <laughs> it's finally you. good talking to you in person, and uh, good, luck. good luck. Thank you so much, Jay. All right, that'll do it for this recruiting period show. Coming at you from Legacy Hall in the campus of the University of Massachusetts. Don't forget to get your women's basketball season tickets. Those are on sale now. We'll check in with you throughout the offseason. Until then, my name's Jay Burnham saying so long from Amherst.